Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Cambridge Technologies webinar on enterprise application utilizing Amazon Web Services Elastic Container Services. My name is Peter Buckley. I'm head of sales with Cambridge Technology. And with me today is Anil Dotra, who's our senior manager of delivery. He'll be giving most of the presentation in terms of the technical aspects. A couple of quick housekeeping notes. There'll be a Q&A at the end. Uh, and uh, we'll answer any questions that you might have. Just put your question in the, uh, in the box on the right-hand side of the uh, GoToMeeting uh, dashboard. And we'll do that. And additionally, we'll uh, send you a link to uh, have the webinar after it's completed if you'd like to view it again or use it to spread around your organization. Again, thank you for joining us. And uh, we hope you'll enjoy the, uh, the webinar. A little overview about Cambridge Technology. We've been around... Since 1999, we're a global business and technology uh, IT consulting services company. A little over 400 employees globally in India, US, and Germany. You can see our locations and we're partners with all the cloud providers and in addition to having partnerships with other technologies. Um, we provide a full set of IT consulting services, AI, uh, cloud services, strategy, transformation, SaaS development, uh, management, monitoring, big data, architecture, design, cluster, data warehouses, data lakes, and the analytics that go with big data, as well as AI and machine learning, and a full set of services around application development. Uh, we can develop them, we can uh, help develop, we can manage, uh, manage, monitor, whatever it might be. And we have uh, a lot of experience uh, with applications in any platform, including mobility. And we also provide a DevOps practice for our customers as well. Cool. As I said, we uh, for cloud and big data, uh, we're pretty much partners with all the major clouds, Oracle, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, IBM. We've been a Microsoft partner since they started their partner program. We were in the first class that they actually did training for in 2009, and we built our cloud practice after that and have continued to grow it with Amazon and the other cloud providers today. These are some of our partners, they're technology partners. We add them and utilize their tools and technology to enhance our service offerings. So we cover everything from data streaming, solutions, Oracle Big Data, load testing and monitoring with Apica, mobility out systems, low code development, IAM with uh, ForgeRock and CA, Tableau, Amazon, New Relic, and as others come around, we engage with them as well. That's a quick overview of who we are. I'm going to turn this over to Anil, and he'll take you through the presentation. Again, thank you for coming, and I'll be back when we get to Q&A. This should run about 30 minutes or so, so hopefully we don't put anybody to sleep. We are uh, sensitive to your time, and uh, we're happy that you're here. Thanks again. Anil? Hello everybody, this is Anil Lothre. I work as a senior manager at Cambridge Technology. And today I'll be talking about uh, configuring enterprise applications with AWS ECS service. As part of the agenda, I'll be talking about a brief uh, you know, note about containers, uh, uh, how our containers are executed at uh, AWS and what are the options we have. And then I'll be also exploring all the different configurations involved uh, in setup of AWS uh, ECS service. I'll be talking about the launch types and then uh, you know the different ecosystem type uh, or the different services which are integrated with uh, AWS. And then I'll be talking about some best practices with the case study and then we'll have a quick recap. To start with uh, containers, uh, you know, prior to containers, there was no standardization for application packaging. If it is a Java application, we would have a WAR or ER file. If it is a Windows, uh, you know, different applications they had their own, uh, you know, packaging, and then there were dependencies, uh, you know, involved in every application. And uh, you know, this because of that, the deployment was a challenge. And then, uh, apart from that, every application has its own. Uh, you know, requirements as far as resources is concerned. Uh, you know, and then you know, if if you have to isolate this application with different applications, the other option was to you know have a VM and then uh, have those applications run into separate machines or VMs. 
and VM traditionally are heavyweight and they, they, they involve uh, heavy start time. And apart from that, uh, maintenance and support was an issue. Uh, uh, you know, it is uh, having running this application in different scripts is, is a challenge. That's where container helps. So container uh, is a, is basically a standardized unit of software wherein you can uh, you know bundle the application and all the dependent software and then uh, ship it into different phases of the application. Uh, you know, it could be like uh, from you do the development and then uh, you just ship the image from from uh, uh, development to QA and then to you know, pre-prod and then prod. And then it is done as a si single unit. Uh, the, the critical thing about this one is uh, the container includes application and the environment which it needs to run. So this is like one single box or a, you know image what we call. And then uh, container, the way uh, the container uh, works is it, it, it leverages on the host OS kernel and uh, it runs as if it is a separate VM, though in reality it's just uh, one separate process having its own namespace and uh, for, you know, resources available. And uh, the, the images are, uh, are what produces the container. So every image, uh, when you instantiate uh, you know, container, it's based on a particular template or an image. And the whole point of this container is it is lightweight, it is fast, it runs anywhere, and it is scalable. Uh, you know, you can stop and stop a, as many containers as you as you need based on the application, and then it is extremely fast. Um, you know, with this, you have this uh, image. Uh, you know, you have a repository of uh, these images. Then orchestration is taken care. There are different uh, ways we can handle the orchestration. There are different technologies out there. Uh, you know, scaling, auto recovery, security, networking and monitoring and auditing, all of these uh, features are supported into AWS ECS, which I'll be talking in the next uh, couple of slides. So to start with, uh, Amazon uh, ECS is a simple service for, for running Docker containers. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, the, the whole purpose of ECS is, uh, you know, if you have containers and you're running in your enterprise and, and uh, if you'd like to move that into cloud, and AWS ECS is the service here which you would like to see. It provides running uh, containers as a standalone containers, or you can use uh, ECS service, uh, you know, for orchestration the containers as well. So AWS provides 99.99% uh, time SLA. Uh, it is highly scalable, available, and then uh, it provides orchestration and cluster management. You can also run uh, AWS ECS in a serverless fashion. Again, I'll be talking in a uh, few other slides uh, how uh, we can configure that. And then ECS provides strong, uh, you know, support for CLI and SDK. Uh, it has, it is, it natively, it natively supports Docker CLI command, uh, um, which means that you don't have to memorize separate sort of uh, you know, CLI commands to to do the management. It about it supports dynamic porting. It is done via uh, ALBs, uh, and then it is included with, if not all, most of the uh, AWS services. And uh, and AWS, uh, you know, does these are the different uh, things which AWS helps. Uh, AWS ECS helps. Uh, it, ha it, it takes care of the orchestration, load balancing, cloud formation. Uh, it, it helps us, uh, you know, manage the auto scaling. It takes care of the networking. It, it helps you in auditing of you know, the, the environment uh, as well as discovery, security, and monitoring. So these are the core features, and uh, each of the different services which helps us. Uh, you know, I'll be uh, detailing that. Uh, on a high level, AWS ECS architecture uh, is is based on uh, you know a core unit is a task. A task is uh, where you basically associate a single or multiple images uh, to a particular task and you run that task. And then you know if if you like to run the task as one off, then you can just run a ad hoc cost task. But if you like to run a task in a long running a uh, process or a batch of uh, the process, you would type that as a service definition and then uh, set up that. So, you know, typically you have a VPC in which you, you can have uh, 
uh, you select a region and then you can have one or mul multiple AZs configured. And then you can create a cluster. A cluster is nothing but a set of EC2 instances uh, if you are running a cluster or you can go in a serverless way. So the container is uh, stored into uh, a separate repository a service called uh, uh, PCR, Container uh, Registry uh, of Amazon. And to start with, uh, you know, we the basic the we, we first create a cluster. A cluster is uh, you know, basically a service, or uh, it is a concept where it creates a group of tasks or services. So, you know, if I have to for a, if I have to uh, look at this in real time, it is like for a given project, you would just create a cluster, and then all the microservices or the applications which are running for that particular application would be part of this. And you might create different clusters for different modes of application, like you might have a production cluster or a development cluster for application, and then group all of these uh, tasks or services into that. It is region specific and you can configure IAM policies on who can access this cluster and who cannot. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, AWS service is, uh, uh, is like you, it's like you have a task and you would like to run the task uh, on uh, on a on, on certain duration and you would like to have a certain number of instances running uh, you would like to uh, you know set up the different networking these are all different uh, uh, attributes are configured as part of uh, aws service so you can create a launch tab which is a forgate which is a serverless or a ec2 cluster and then you can run behind the ALB. Uh, you can say that you know I want to have minimum these many number of tasks, uh, or uh, you know this is the minimum and this is the maximum configuration. And the service type, uh, whether it is a you know a long running task or it's a, you know a, a daemon which is more of a batch processing. And then uh, you can use uh, placement controls. Uh, I'll be talking more about this in the next couple of slides, as well as to networking, auto scaling, and the source tags. And as I mentioned earlier, task definition is the basic uh, piece of uh, uh, unit here in ECS. Uh, uh, this is where you tie a container image to a particular task. You can you can tie multiple kind of images to a task, but uh, uh, but it it. it the best practice is to associate a single container to a task unless you have containers which are uh, you know side containers like uh, logging or monitoring which has to be next to it uh, as part of the design uh, you know you can associate a memory or a cpu uh, to, to that particular task and you can add uh, resource tags and um, provide the logging and also you can associate iam role for um, security And, in, and the right side, which you see, is an uh, image of uh, how that configuration looks in AWS. Um, as you see, you have the task definition, you give the task role, uh, you give the network, and then you pro provide uh, you know, which IAM role it has to take when it, when it has to uh, run, and then you provide the task uh, configuration. There are some defaults uh, set up, so you don't really have to uh, you know, set up when you're doing uh, you know, testing, but in production, you need to uh, strongly suggest they have that. And then as far as the launch modes are concerned, uh, you know, the ECS service has two different launch modes. The first one is EC2, EC2 cluster. So here what happens is, uh, you know, customer or the vendor manages uh, the container instances. Here, what I mean by container instances is the EC2 instances, which are enabled for car running containers. So there's no, uh, in this case, uh, for using the ECS service, there's no charge. You will be charged only for running the EC2 instances or um, the container instances. Uh, in this case, you will be just enjoying uh, or running the ECS service for no charge uh, compared to having a serverless uh, you know, uh, model wherein uh, you just have the containers and then you leverage on AWS Fargate to, to run these uh, containers. And in this case, the price is per task. So every task which you run uh, will be charged uh, based on the amount of time it takes uh, for it to run. And uh, and 
And I mean, this is a very common question. Like, uh, you know, yes, we have two different tasks, and you know, when should we opt for a for gate of, of service, or when should we opt for a EC2 cluster? So, EC2 cluster is recommended when uh, there is a requirement for compliance or government, uh, you know, governance requirement, or we'd like to have more control on the EC2 container. Uh, since you manage the EC2 instances, you have more control. You have, you can set up, uh, you know, these containers to run not only EC2 instances but anything else as part of your uh, data center. You can also leverage on uh, EC2 spot instances for costing. Um, EC2 spot spot or reserve instances provide at least 20 or 30 percent of uh, uh, cost reduction. Uh, provided uh, you can foresee that you can run that EC2 instance for at least a year or uh, somewhere between a year or three. And uh, I mean, the, the best part about this one is you don't, you can use the ECS service, uh, including the orchestration, but you don't pay anything for that. The other option is uh, ECS for Git launch option. This is the serverless offering for AWS here. Uh, the the, the trade-in is uh, AWS provides all the different, uh, you know, uh, it takes care of the infrastructure, but you just run the container and you just pay for the price uh, for using the ECS service. So every task which you run, uh, which is nothing but a container or set of containers, you run, uh, you, you pay for per task and how long the task is running. And, uh, you know, the, the, the best part is the vendor or the application doesn't really have to uh, configure the cluster or provision or manage the ECS containers. It's, extremely easy to configure and uh, set up and going. So in this slide, uh, I'll be talking about uh, the different auto scaling options uh, ECS provides. Uh, so either you can target for, you can opt for a target tracking auto scaling or, auto, or step auto scaling. So as part of this, uh, you know, you would you would say you would configure a you know based on a certain target value. It can be either average CPU or a memory or ALB count per target, and based on these numbers, you can scale in and scale out. So for this, the way um, uh, AWS ECS uh, tracks this target is it, it leverages on AWS CloudWatch alarms, and based on the alarms, it uh, scales in or scales out. And there's one other option which is step auto scaling. Uh, this is uh, the new version wherein uh, you configure the, the cloud alarm uh, you know, auto scaling and then based on the CPU and memory utilization uh, thresholds, it, uh, it, uh, it auto scales. So the first one is more on, uh, you know, targeted wherein you specify the target. The other one is you just specify uh, you know, the CPU utilization uh, metrics and then based on that, it uh, Scales in or scales out. And then uh, this slide talks about the scheduling strategies. Uh, uh, there are two different uh, strategies. One is the replica and the daemon. And as I mentioned earlier, replica is uh, typically for long running tasks. It, it maintains the set of uh, tasks. And then uh, if any of the tasks fail, it reschedules. Uh, whereas the daemon is, uh, uh, you know, here the, the configuration set is. Is in set is in such a way that if you have uh, you know, uh, this cluster running in different AZs, uh, AWS ECS will make sure at least one task is running in each of the uh, uh, AZs that is having one active container. And this is only available for uh, daemon uh, type of uh, scaling strategies only available for AC2 cluster launch type. And uh, in this slide, we talk about the different uh, placement strategies. So, state placement strategies is concept where uh, you know the e ECS service uh, uh, takes up a particular strategy for selecting instances to be placed uh, uh, in, in case when if it is uh, 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 terminated. So, you, you can use different types of uh, strategies that is random spread or bin 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 pack. So. Uh, Random is where uh, ECS service would randomly place the containers in the available clusters. Spread is where it, it would evenly spread based on the available AZs or instance ID or host. And bin pack is the option which is, uh, you know, it, 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 
it places the container based on the least amount of CPU or memory available uh, for that particular cluster. And uh, the other feature is uh, service deployment options. Uh, there are two different options as far as the deployment is concerned. There's a rolling update and then there's a blue-green deployment. So rolling update is uh, basically you, you specify the minimum 50% you would like to have uh, uh, the containers running at any time and the maximum percent. Uh, when you say minimum percent, uh, uh, for example, if if you if you have configured to have eight tasks running at any time with a minimum healthy percent of 75, then the scheduler will replace two tasks per rolling update, which means that it needs four iterations for it to replace uh, uh, the running task with the latest version of um, the container which you have put it into uh, ECR. Compared to a maximum percent, wherein uh, you you provide the upper threshold. And then the, the the system will uh, basically scale up the machine, the scale up the containers with the new uh, uh, scale up the new containers, and then uh, scale down um, the old containers based on the percentage which you uh, specified. In this case, if you if you have eight, if you have con configured eight uh, containers maximum uh, and with the maximum percentage of 150, then the scheduler uh, what it does is it adds. Of four additional containers per rolling update, and uh, you know it will based on that it will have all the new uh, containers running. So this is this is about rolling update, wherein you have uh, running both uh, uh, new and older versions of the containers running based on the configuration you set. The other type is the blue green deployment, wherein it is uh, you know you'll have either one version of the container running, either it is the old or the new one, and uh, as part of the option, you would say, you know, all at once option only available. Uh, you know, traffic routing and rerouting is immediately, or you can do it manually as well. And uh, the best part about this is, uh, in case of any issues in the deployment, you can always, uh, you know, uh, retain or term uh, terminate the original instance if the new version is going good. And uh, as part of this blue green, you can verify the new deployment service before uh, you go for the production in one deployment, which is um, the blue one. Um, it, it, ECS net, task networking, it supports uh, four different types of networking. Uh, and the first three is, uh, uh, I think it's part of the Docker networking uh, now basics, which is the bridge, which is the basic uh, default networking uh, Docker supports. Uh, then you can say you don't want any networking for that task. Uh, for if you have a scenario where you don't really need this more of a compute and you have the data for which it has to compute, it is already there. So that is the none. And then you have the other two tasks which are host and AWS VPC. So host is where it leverages on the host network interface, and AWS VPC is where you connect the container to uh, the VPC uh, on which it is running. So what AWS ECS does is it creates a ENI or Elastic Network Interface to every task so that it can uh, provide connectivity. And all, all of these four, out of these four options, uh, host and AWS uh, VPC offers a high network bandwidth um, because it is it uses the EC2 network settings. And uh, the downside of this is the containers are mapped to host ports disallowing dynamic porting. So uh, that is a uh, my side. And uh, AWS VPC is only available for uh, for gate launch type. It is not available for uh, EC2 cluster type. And then in scenarios where uh, you know the containers have have to access or store uh, data, uh, there are two different options. Um, uh, or you know for different launch modes, uh, the requirements are different. Uh, for for gate, uh, you know, by default, for gate are meant to be stateless, uh, which means that uh, though it it provides non-persistent 10 gigabyte storage for every task, and additionally four gigabyte for additional volume mounts. Uh, you know, these are shared among containers, and you provide mount points and uh, volumes uh, as part of the parameters. EC2 cluster launch my uh, launch launch mode provides two different types of uh, you know, task volumes. One is the volume type, which is the Docker volumes, uh, and you can it can be accessed at uh, you know, at the red lib Docker volumes. And uh, 
there are some built-in um, uh, third-party drivers through which you can configure uh, AWS EPS as a volume. Uh, you can use that, and uh, the EPS would be uh, m uh, mounted as a volume to the container. Or you can uh, use the bind nodes, which are uh, uh, in which the host file, the host uh, directory of uh, uh, the files and directories are stored on the host uh, container. But again, uh, in this case, uh, as long as these instances tied to that, uh, you know, or the EBS uh, tied to that, you have that. And then you need to have snapshots for, for backup. And then uh, the last one is about, uh, the last feature is resourcing and tagging. Uh, primarily used resourcing just to, uh, 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 for costing and auditing and uh, for security purposes. Uh, you can add the resource tagging for task definition, for clusters, uh, task itself, and then services, uh, and then uh, for the container instances. So as I said, it helps uh, uh, for managing the policies and auditing it. And most important is the pricing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, EC2 cluster launch, there's no price. Uh, you don't need to pay for ECS since you're already paying for the EC2 uh, nodes or EC2 instances. And you just pay for the EC2 and the EBS uh, volumes which you use compared to forget wherein um, it will be, you'll be charged uh, uh, 0.04048 cents per uh, virtual CPU per hour and uh, 0.004445 cents per gigabyte per hour. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is you can configure uh, a particular task uh, based on uh, these different supported configurations. You can configure a task which is like a, you know heavy compute, which means that you would just configure four CPUs, and uh, as part of the mem uh, as part of the volume is concerned or the memory is concerned, you can uh, uh, configure anything around eight gigabyte and between 30 gigabyte. That is for us, uh, you know, a highly uh, compute int intensive uh, task container versus a very lightweight container wherein you can go as low as 0 0.5 virtual CPU with a memory of uh, 0.5, one or two gigabyte. And this pricing is uh, as per 10, 15, 2019, that is yesterday. And uh, when we talk about ECS, we always talk about containers and images. Uh, you know, one of the services which is tightly integrated out core for ECS is ECR, that is called Elastic Containers uh, Registry. So uh, this is like a private registry for AWS, uh, which is shared across vendors. And the way that it segregates, it's using uh, roles and uh, obviously accounts. The developer can store and manage uh, these Docker images. And uh, you know it is integrated with IAM. Uh, this e ECR service is reliable and scalable. Uh, uh, it removes the overhead of managing your self-managed private containers, and it provides a Docker CLI uh, uh, to to basically manage the containers. And it is uh, it it comes with the cost. So it is like per per gigabyte, it is like ten cents, and uh, there's additional charge for data in and out. Um, and there's no charge if you're having that service uh, all into uh, the same AV um, uh, or in fact the same region. And uh, as far as the integration is uh, concerned, uh, uh, it is uh, ECS is integrated with security uh, using IAM uh, security groups, uh, uh, web application firewall, and uh, AWS Shield. Networking, it leverages on uh, PPC, ENI, and uh, multi-AZ. Costing, you can leverage on Cost Explorer uh, to, to see the detailing of the cost or set up alerts using budget. And then as far as discovery is concerned, AWS uh, ECS leverages on Node 53 and a new service called CloudMap. It is uh, key value based services based on you can uh, discover uh, parameters. And then uh, there's a high, uh, the, the service is highly available. It leverages some multi AV uh, uh, option. And then uh, you associate a ALB uh, for high availability. Then as far as DevOps practices is concerned, you can add a code pipeline uh, with code deploy for um, deploying the uh, containers. 
and then it, it leverages on CloudWatch logs for the logging and CloudTrail for auditing. Uh, you can leverage on CloudWatch metrics for monitoring. You can create different uh, types of metrics based on the CPU and, uh, and different other parameters. And as far as best practices are concerned, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, designing uh, a task is you would typically con uh, 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 comp compose one particular container per task. And unless you have the sidecar containers, uh, which has to be run in the same cont container instance. And uh, the prime reason why we do for this, it's not only about task, the container design by itself is meant to be uh, doing one task at a time or one business process at a time. And uh, the whole point of this is uh, it helps uh, scaling in and out. Uh, and, uh, that is again, it's uh, related to microservices as well. Uh, that's where these are all related. And then uh, monitor, uh, uh, you would uh, you would monitor the uh, ECS using uh, you know uh, that is a best practice using cloud watching metrics. Uh, you can you can leverage on alarm uh, notification uh, in case uh, some the, one of the service needs uh, uh, monitoring. And then on the costing part, uh, you know if you are using the EC tool on Stripe, uh, you would use uh, a leverage on spot instances. As I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, if, if, if you can foresee that the application or uh, that environment is gonna go uh, running for a year, uh, between one and uh, three years, you can leverage on spot instances uh, and you can get a discount uh, anything around, uh, I believe 10 to 30% based on the instance type. And then uh, you would, uh, for costing, you would leverage on auto scaling, you would scale uh, you know, small, uh, then based on the demand, uh, you know, the ECS service can scale up. And then uh, security is very important. Uh, you, know, you would uh, ensure, uh, you know, or you would set up least privilege access model when in using IAM policies. And then you would retain, uh, uh, reduce the container attack service, which means that having limited, uh, you know, uh, exposure for the container, including the port numbers and the different, uh, you know, uh, external access points. And then uh, the other important thing is, in general, it's not related to ECS, is running the containers as a non root. Uh, by default, Docker containers, when you run, it runs as a root. Uh, we strongly recommend not running that as a root. And then uh, instead of uh, you know, uh, hard coding the, uh, you know, the application configuration parameters, you would leverage on secrets, uh, which, which can be uh, you know, embedded into the container which means that there's um, no hard coding or no, there's no credentials or any uh, you know, uh, important information in there. And uh, lastly, I will talk about a case study. Uh, um, this, is, this case study was for a pharmaceutical client. Uh, they had a lot, you know, large amount of raw scientific data and uh, uh, the scientist, uh, you know, need the data to be processed so that they can do uh, data analytics. And uh, as part of this case study, uh, the typical raw data uh, would take uh, around three weeks to a month to get processed. Uh, uh, when I say processed, uh, it is point to the point where the raw data is given by the vendor, and then uh, they run different scientific computations, and it was taking around three weeks to a month for the scientists to actually see the data in the, in the format which they can understand easily and take decisions. And then the challenge with this uh, amount of data is uh, you know, there's a limited network bandwidth and compared to servers. Uh, we are talking of uh, you know, at least uh, 15 to 20 gigabytes per particular uh, batch and uh, there are multiple batches in a month. And then uh, the storage was also a challenge. And they wanted a web application so that the scientists can do data analytics on that. So as part of this, uh, we came up with a you know, cloud-based uh, serverless solution. Uh, it leveraged on different AWS uh, you know, uh, services, including uh, Lambda and ECS. Um, of course, there are a lot of other features of uh, you know, components prior to that, but uh, in interest of this presentation, we we, we provided this uh, particular slide. And then um, the solution was cost-effective, reason being uh, the, the instances were running on demand. Uh, it, was, it was serverless. Uh, there were no long-running services. And then the data was stored into S3 using different, uh, you know, costing uh, strategies. Uh, that is, uh, you know, archiving at a, after a certain point, 
and uh, you know that's reducing the cost. So if you see the the, the diagram there, uh, the vendor to the left, uh, 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 the, that's not actually the vendor. That's the user. He uses the uh, web application to access the the ALB and then access the application the application and then you have the other uh, buckets which are uh, shade and then we use uh, leverage on AWS Lambda to do the compute. So yeah, this is uh, about the case study and then uh, this is a quick re recap on what we spoke about. Uh, you know. Uh, ECS is a great service. It has uh, you know, plenty of features. I'm not sure uh, how many uh, features uh, you know you could get with uh, the earlier slides, but it has got plenty of features. Uh, you know, it has got a, a robust architecture, and then uh, the task and service definition options are very you know obvious. And they are very simple, easy to configure. And then we talk about uh, uh, I explained the different launch types and uh, when to use which launch type. And I explained the different ecosystem uh, integrations with ECS, and I just wanted to give a few of the recent up updates on ECS. Um, the most recent one is uh, now using ECS, uh, you, know, you can basically track which image uh, is running on which instance. Uh, it, you can go to that level, and then uh, it also gives you the container ID. Uh, you know, whenever you deploy a container, it gives you container ID, and earlier in instances where uh, developer wanted to see the container ID for other purposes that was done using multiple scripts, uh, uh, leveraging multiple CLI commands. But now uh, with the recent upgrade, they they also expose the container ID as well. So there there are a lot of other features, including support for CLI uh, version three. Uh, you know the target uh, tracking auto scaling, which I earlier mentioned, that was the easier option than doing it the manual uh, option of uh, Manually configuring the other, uh, based on the cloud version metrics, you you do that. Uh, that is the other option. And then now the ECS launch times are pretty uh, uh, significantly they have improved. The GPU pinning is where uh, you, know, you 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 use ECS instances which are GPU type and then allocate uh, uh, EC container instances to run them. This is primarily for uh, AI ML uh, related containers which need a lot of GPU. And then uh, it, it has added uh, container health checks, uh, SH, SHM uh, size and uh, temporary uh, file location service, uh, temporary file service, so basically having the temporary file system for the Docker containers. And then um, it adds uh, separate new features, including discovery, app mesh, uh, preview, daemon scheduling, um, SHM, uh, SSM parameter support, uh, task metric, uh, metadata endpoint, and uh, agent. ACN assigned agent for security. So with this, I would uh, let uh, uh, Peter take the presentation. And uh, Peter, great. Thanks, Anil. Great job. Um, there really aren't any questions, so you must have done a fantastic job of explaining this. So appreciate that. Um, if you do need additional. Uh, Assistance, or if you have more questions, uh, you can see at the bottom line there for a strategy or consultation, contact us at sales at ctepl.com. And we'd be happy to help you out in any way that we possibly can. I want to thank you again for joining us today. We've enjoyed having you. Uh, keep your eye out. We'll be sending you additional invitations to uh, other webinars that we'll be doing over the coming months that uh, involve everything from data lakes, data warehouses, and data streaming. Um, we have quite a few going and we'd love to have you join us again. Thanks again. Thanks Anil and everybody have a great day.